my fellow Nevadans, my friends, I take the great honor and pleasure to introduce to you the President of the United States. Well, thank you. Thank you for a very warm and a fine Nevada welcome. And of course, I'm always pleased to be here with a longtime friend, you were Senator Paul Laxalt. I almost lost his friendship back when we first got acquainted with each other as governors. I invited him to ran ride with me at Ranchero's Vistadores. <laughs> the night was freezing cold. <laughs> but, and I think we all owe a debt of thanks to our host and hostess. You're wonderful to do this. great many entertainers who are a little cautious about doing things political, but I remember one night just being a guest at a ringside table, and he was singing here in Nevada, and he interrupted his show to call attention to me, and then just said, I know that uh, this isn't usually done, but I just want to tell you, and he told him that I was his candidate. Uh, <laughs> honor to be your guest again. I can't tell you how great it feels to be out west. Uh, you know, I, said, I said back in Reno this morning, I said that did you ever stop to think? It's awfully easy to get homesick when you're from the west. And I asked him if they'd ever stopped to think that if Columbus had only come across the Pacific instead of the Atlantic, the capital would have been out here. <laughs> but I can't think of a better reason to be here than to be supporting the candidacy of a man who's always been there when it counted. A man who will make Nevada a tremendous United States Senator, Chick Hecht. Yeah. Chick has a fine record of service to his country and to the people of Nevada. Over the years, he's worked closely with the Senator, as you know, and he certainly has worked hard for me and with me. He's a strong individual who stands for the qualities that won the West. Self-reliance, hard work, family, and a belief in God. Furthermore, he's got common sense. And if there's anything we need more of in Washington, it's common sense. When you say common sense out loud in Washington, near a government building, our Democratic friends get an attack of the vapors. In 1980, Thanks to the support and leadership of men like Chick, we were able to send a team to Washington dedicated to cleaning up a mess that had been accumulating for years. Now, I was in Kansas recently, Wayne raising Arabian horses, you may appreciate this. It's a comparison that Senator Dole made, who was out there at the time in his home state, of what we had found in Washington when we got there 21 months ago. He likened the situation to a somewhat neglected stable. He said things had just been piling up. <laughs> <laughs> Setting things right wasn't going to happen overnight. <laughs> and he was right. You can't clean up in 20 months what it took 20 years to put there. Now that another political season is on us, there are those who would like us to believe that all of our economic woes started 21 months ago. I guess you have to expect that from those who gave us the highest inflation, the highest interest rates and taxes in American history. We still have a long way to go, but I think we've made progress. Does anyone here want to go back to the inflation that we knew two years ago? It was 12.4% then and have been running at double-digit levels for two years. You know, a lot of us, we look at the price tags and we think of inflation, but we don't really stop and think what that really is costing us. Those two years of double-digit inflation just erased more than 25 cents out of every dollar that everybody had in insurance or a savings account or in their paycheck or anything of that kind. For the first eight months of this year, 
Inflation has been 5.1%, and last month it was at an annualized rate of 3.3%. And we're still going to get it down lower than that until it's gone entirely. Does anyone want to go back to the interest rates of two years ago? They were 21.5% just before we took office. When finally, last summer, we had them down to 16 and a half, then down to 13 and a half as of yesterday. And as of this morning, we have learned that a number of the leading banks in the country have knocked that half point off and they're down to a flat 13. Good. For those who do their gambling on Wall Street, uh, I suppose you've heard the news that for the second straight day, yesterday it went up 37 points, today it's gone up 22 points, and the biggest turnover of stock, 155,000 shares in the history of Wall Street. But when we took office, federal taxes and spending were out of control. Taxes doubled in just five years, and spending was going up at a rate the 18 year, 1980 budget, I should say, of 17% in that one year. Well, we've cut that growth rate in spending more than in half, and we've given the people the first real tax cut in the income tax that they've had in 20 years. Incidentally, I saw a poll the other day, and this poll said, among other things, it wasn't too unfriendly to us, but then it said, the question was, who's better at lowering the income tax. And believe it or not, the majority of Americans said the Democratic Party. Well, the income tax went into business in 1914. And since then, it has been lowered once by the Democrats and 14 times by Republicans. <laughs> so the, the trends of two years ago had continued, they would have spelled disaster for America. Young and old, wage earners and housekeepers. And I think the people sense this. That's why in 1980 they sent a team to Washington that was pledged to get to the heart of our problems and turn the situation around. And I think we've done that. We may not have made the progress yet that we intend to make, but we're going in a different direction than Washington has been going for more than 20 years. Now, all our problems aren't solved, of course. We've got a serious unemployment problem. It was serious before I was elected, and I can assure you that as long as there's one person without a job who wants one, then that is too much unemployment as far as I'm concerned. But we'll never cure unemployment or any of our other problems by reverting to the tax, spend, and inflate policies that got us into this mess in the first place. I'm also going to repeat something I told the people uh, this morning. Uh, they're now trying to hang this 9.8, and tomorrow I'm afraid that all the signs and the prophecies indicate that it's going to go up another notch, unemployment. But even so, they're trying to hang that all on us in 21 months. And I want to be fair. When we took office, unemployment was 7.4. Today it's 9.8. Okay, I'll take responsibility for the 2.4 if they'll take responsibility for the 7.4. <laughs> There will be <laughs> the answer to unemployment, though, is exactly the thing that we've been the most successful at. And it will show up. Unemployment's always the last thing that gets well in the sickness of a recession or a depression. But the thing that causes it, basically, is inflation. When inflation goes up, those who lend money have to raise the interest rates in order to keep pace with that depreciating value of their money while it's out on loan. And so when the interest rates went up, as they did prior to this administration, people stopped buying automobiles in great numbers because they couldn't afford the interest on the installments. People stopped building houses or buying them because they couldn't afford the mortgage rate 16, 17 and a half percent for a mortgage. So how do you get the people back to work? When people stop buying, stop building, people get laid off. They're not working. And then it spreads to the people who make appliances, to the people who provide the steel for automobiles. 
Well, you get inflation down to bring the interest rates down as we're doing, and then when people begin to buy again, they will have to call back the people that have been laid off and productivity will increase. Now, there are, there are already signs that the program is beginning to work. The gross national product is up. Personal disposable income after taxes has increased five of the last six months. Productivity is up, and that hasn't been true for a long time. I told you the stock market's up. The dollar is strong, stronger than it has been in years and years. In fact, it's the strongest currency in the world today. That is friendship and his support. You also have two representatives. So on election day, you can cast a vote for good government by supporting Peggy Kavnar and Barbara Bukanovich. I know that their districts uh, come together right here in this in this county, and I know that Peggy Kavnar, I think we're in her district right now, but uh, all right, good. I'm glad I was correct or straightened out of that. You know her as a state legislator. You know she's intelligent, she's smart, and you know that she's principled, and we can sure use her and make Tip unhappy, but then that doesn't disturb me. <laughs> And those of you who are across the line in the other district, Barbara Bukanovich, known for years, you know her as Paul's trusted aide for a long time. You know also that her opponent is opposed to everything that we're trying to do. So we want Peggy and we want Barbara both there too, along with Chick. And then because I'm trying very hard to get support in the Congress to turn back to state. <laughs> I'll try to finish up before I try to get something out of my eye here. The, the, the tremendous public support, 80% of the people in the polls have said they want a constitutional amendment that will require the federal government to balance the budget. Well, the big spenders and taxes confirmed that they haven't changed their ways. They are still willing to mortgage our children's future. The their defeat in the balanced budget amendment was a slap in the face of every American who believes that government should live within its means. And remember that also a majority in the Congress voted for that amendment. They lost only because it takes a two-thirds majority to pass an amendment of that kind. But that's why this election is so vital, because when we get back there, in the new session of Congress, we're going to start in and we're going to get that balanced budget amendment. Ralph, Ralph Waldo Emerson once wrote that America means opportunity, freedom, and power. Well, before we took office, there were those who seemed to be writing America off. We were told we should expect a lower standard of living, that our best days were behind us. Well, don't you believe it? America still has within it the same potential Emerson and our forefathers recognized. Together with individuals like Chick Hecht and these other candidates here and your governor, we can bring responsibility back to Washington. We can renew the spirit of optimism that was once so much a part of our national character. In other words, together, we can make America great again, and we're going to do it. God bless you all and thank you.
Great Grayson. Greatest America we have today. It's a pleasure to shake your hand.